It's been almost three years since Brooks initially released the Hyperion Tempo, and it hasn't gotten an update since. But now we've finally gotten that long overdue follow-up. This is the Hyperion Max, and it just may have been worth the wait. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I want to tell you about the Brooks Hyperion Max, one of two Hyperion road shoes that we're going to be seeing from Brooks this year. But before I get into these shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Hyperion Max is a pair of shoes that Brooks sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Brooks Hyperion Max. First, let's go over some specs and what the two different Hyperion shoes are going to be. Now, previously we had the Hyperion Tempo, which was a beautiful shoe that came out several years ago that I instantly had fallen in love with, but we haven't seen an update since. I think that Brooks is going to kind of stay the course and continue to not change that shoe, but the Hyperion Tempo will just become the Hyperion. They're going to lose that tempo word from it. And this now is the Hyperion Max, which what makes it Max is that it's essentially Hyperion Tempo with an extra layer of stack height on it. We still have that same DNA flash foam. And from what I could tell, it's the same formulation of midsole foam. Now, I know a lot of companies have kind of like a trade named foam and every year or even within the same year across different models, that foam may feel different depending on how it's used. But with DNA Flash, I feel like when I see DNA Flash, I know what I'm getting. And that's certainly the case here in the Brooks Hyperion Max. But we are getting more stack height than what we got in the Hyperion Tempo. I don't have exact numbers for what the stack heights are, but it's somewhere in the low 30s in terms of stack height in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, which puts us in the kind of like the mid 20s for stack height, which doesn't seem super tall, but compared to the original Tempo, there is a noticeable amount of difference. There's nothing else in this shoe, no plate, no other stabilizers, no other foam. It's just that DNA flash midsole. We do have what looks like to be a slightly wider base that you're going to be standing on too. So not only are you getting kind of like a deeper amount of DNA flash midsole to stand on, you're getting a wider base to land on as well. And that's gonna be really important once we talk about what it's like to run in the shoe. On the outsole, we have a very different outsole pattern than what we saw on the Hyperion Tempo. This is made out of what Brooks is called their green rubber, which I'm not exactly sure if there's anything about the rubber itself that makes it green, but Brooks is saying that it's a lightweight yet durable material for long lasting traction designed with the environment in mind. So I don't know if it's just that it's gonna last longer as far as an outsole material goes so you don't have to replace shoes as much or maybe there is something going on with the rubber itself or maybe both. Either way, uh, that's what's going on the outsole and I found it to be nice and grippy and I didn't find that there was too much of it, although it does look like there's quite a bit. On the upper, there's a stretch weave material, which I think is very nice. Reminds me definitely of what we saw in the original Hyperion Tempo. Fit is very similar to the original shoe, although I think the original Hyperion Tempo felt a little bit stretchier still than this stretch weave upper that's here, or maybe that's just the way that my mind's remembering it. Either way, it's a very breathable shoe, a very comfortable shoe, not too much padding up in the back and everything kind of stays out of the way while keeping that shoe planted right onto your foot. One more thing that I wanna point out for you guys is that this shoe has an aggressive rocker up front. Brooks is calling it their rapid roll technology. So it's curled up at the front of the foot so that way it helps pick that heel off the ground and gets you moving forward to your next stride. It helps make this shoe feel nice and snappy. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a very lightweight of 7.1 ounces and 221 grams. All right, those are the specs on the shoe. Let's talk about what it was like to run in it. Now, I took this shoe out for a workout and also for an easy run as well, and it did surprisingly well in both of those situations. When you look at the Hyperion Max, you're like, that looks like a Hyperion Tempo, just with a little bit more stack height on it. And I feel like that's a really good kind of explanation of what it's like to run in this shoe. It kind of felt like I was running in a Hyperion Tempo that had a slightly softer kind of like edge to it, like the bottom of it felt just a little bit more cushioned than the Hyperion Tempo. So if you're familiar with that shoe and you really like that shoe, but 
felt like it might have been just a little bit too kind of raw, a little bit too close to the ground, this is going to be the shoe that you're going to want. I know that I like the Hyperion Max, I think even more than I like the Hyperion Tempo, at least because I think for the way that I run as someone who trains for road marathons, I will take that little bit of extra cushion for a shoe that's set up like this shoe where I think it excels at some of those marathoners workouts. The workout that I did was a threshold repeat sessions, six minutes on, one minute off. And I felt like trying to turn over at that pace in between 10K and marathon speed, I really liked the way that this shoe was snappy. This shoe felt like it was so lightweight and very nimble. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with that DNA Flash midsole foam, the way that I can best explain it is that it's kind of a weird and confusing foam at first. It feels very firm. Like when you first put it on, you're like, this is a lot of firm, stiff foam that I'm standing on and I'm not sure that I'm gonna like it. You walk around in it and you feel that aggressive roll forward where that curl at the front of the shoes kind of picks you up and leads you forward a little bit. And to me, like the walking around, the initial step in is a bit awkward and takes a minute to get used to. Even when you start warming up and some light jogging in the shoe, you're not sure if this shoe is gonna work. But this shoe really excels once you start putting some speeds, putting a little bit extra force into each step. That's when I feel like it absorbs the impact in the right way and it decompresses and gives you back all that impact you've put into it in a very exciting and quick way. And it feels like it's just right when you're moving at those speeds. The other thing that I'll note is that because of this wide base, it also is one of the more stable speed shoes that I've run in. And in fact, I actually like it more than the plated version of this shoe, which is the Hyperion Elite. Because that shoe is even wider still, and it does have a plate, but I feel like the plate and the DNA Flash midsole foam don't really need each other quite as much as other super squishy racing foams do uh, need that carbon for both the springiness, but also some of that stability. And so I feel like taking it out, shaving down the width a little bit, so that way it's not quite as wide of a shoe, not as clunky of a shoe, but still retains a lot of that really nice roll through while having a very lightweight package that I think can be used very well, both for workouts and for a lot of people, this is gonna be a fantastic race day option as well. And another reason for that is because of that extra bit of stack height that they've put into the shoe. I've been able to use this shoe not only for my workouts, but also for easy runs as well. I took it for, I think, a 10 or 11 mile run on some bike paths, so some paved surfaces. And even though at first it does feel like, I don't know if this is gonna work because it feels very firm, once you kind of get moving a little bit, your foot has to kind of get used to it for a second. And also I feel like the foam kind of like mellows out after the first couple of minutes or so, uh, but it actually turned into a really nice daily training shoe that rolled really well. For as grip and traction go, I had it on not some wet surfaces, but on my workout day, it wasn't exactly pristine and dry conditions either. And I feel like the outsole tread is going to be really useful on some of those days where some of your higher end pure racing shoes might struggle just a little bit. I feel like there's just a little bit of extra traction on here. And it's also gonna be a little bit more durable than some of those premier racing shoes. And I also feel like the upper on this shoe is really comfortable as well. You kind of get it onto your foot, cinch it down and it disappears. And it's a very comfortable upper. I went true to size on it. I feel like that was the right way to go for me. Now let's go to the summary portion where I go over a couple of bullet points and make some suggestions on shoes if you're looking at this particular shoe. Now, I think that the Hyperion Max is best for workouts, those long run workouts, and even a little bit of racing for some people. And I do think that some people are also going to be able to use it as their daily trainer as well, if they like or prefer a slightly firmer ride. Now, if you're thinking about this shoe, I think there's a couple of shoes that you should also be considering. If you're looking for that race day option with DNA Flash, another shoe that you should definitely consider at least is the Hyperion Elite. I think they're on version three at this point. It's going to be a little bit wider in the forefoot and it's got that carbon. So if you're looking for something a little bit extra, that's something that you're probably also going to look at. And another shoe that you probably are also going to look at if you're looking at this shoe is going to be that Boston 11. This shoe is taller than you would expect it to be and it does have an aggressive roll up at the front. This shoe is best when it's being used in a workout and for easy days, some people can use it. It is a little bit on the firmer side. The Boston though, 
is much heavier than the Hyperion Maxes. So for racing, definitely I'd give the edge to the Hyperion Max. Now, in terms of shoes to pair the Hyperion Max with, that's a little bit of a tougher one because this DNA Flash midsole is pretty unique. If you want to go the other way from this being pretty firm and you use it on workouts and race day and maybe some easy days, the opposite end of the spectrum would be to go with something super plush and cushioned. And I would say, try pairing it with the Fresh Foam More version 4. It's also a very tall stack height shoe, but this Fresh Foam X midsole that's in here is really nice and spongy and soft and can be a very nice kind of counterpoint to the firm snappiness of the Hyperion Max and its DNA Flash midsole. The other shoe that you might wanna pair the Hyperion Max with, let's go on the other end, let's go racing. So let's say you're using the Hyperion Max for easy days and some workouts. For your race day, I think that you're probably gonna like the Asics Meta Speed Edge Plus. Now there's a Meta Speed Sky Plus and the Meta Speed Edge Plus. The Edge Plus I feel like is designed for people that like a little bit more of a snappy turnover and more stability when their foot hits the ground. So I feel like a race day option that would go well for someone who likes the Hyperion Max would be this Meta Speed Edge Plus. Now, in terms of the buying guide, this shoe is brand new. It's available on the Brooks website right now, and it retails at 170. And part of me feels like that's kind of expensive, but at the same time, the regular Brooks Hyperion Tempo, or what's gonna be called just the Brooks Hyperion when the new update comes out, I think is still gonna be 150. It doesn't look like it's on discount. And I feel like 150 is the right price for that shoe. You're getting a little bit more with the Hyperion Max. So like the 170 probably is the right price. And if you're gonna also be using it for racing too, it ends up being like a really good bargain of a racing shoe. So at 170 for the Hyperion Max or 150 for the Hyperion or Hyperion Tempo, I think both of those are good prices. I don't know that you're going to be able to get any cheaper in the near future. So if these are shoes you're interested in, don't worry about adding it to your cart or picking it up at your local running retail. I think you're gonna be pretty excited about these shoes. So those are my thoughts on the Hyperion Max. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?